Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. Check out my little monster here. This is the X Frame by GEP RC. This is on GearBest.com's website. It's called the GB190 on their site. It's a DIY kit, so you have to build it yourself. Uh, took me a couple days at the bench to get it exactly right. I went through a few versions of how I have things set up back here and underneath in this stack. And I'm gonna show you that a little more in detail after we come back from the flight test. But right out of the box, um, the components on this one are absolutely top end. Uh, 30 amp ESCs, they're Opto, and they're little b ESCs, uh, two to six S. So you can really, really put a huge battery on this if you wanted to. Super durable frame. I didn't break anything in my crash test, um, in my flight test. So very, very punky little frame and uh, insane power. So we'll take a few minutes to do a flight test. I'll show you some of that footage and I'll come back and I'll get more in detail about this kit. And I'll show you what I like about it and what I didn't like about it. So here we go. Enjoy the flight test. Okay, that was a lot of fun flying that. Now, let's get into some of the specifics about this frame kit. Um, right away, let's just talk about the props real quick. It does come with some starter props. I call them starter props because this happened uh, on my first crash. Um, so these props, they will be okay for a few flights, um, but the minute you go in for a hard crash, they're done. Uh, so go ahead and get yourself some dowel props and do it proper. The nice thing about these motors is if you guys are new, you don't have to grab another quad to compare it and, and try to remember which prop goes on which motor because they do have arrows on here to let you know. Um, I seem to always forget myself. So you know which side they go on. Um, now I went through a couple revisions of this when I was building my stack. Uh, the first setup that I did build in here they have uh, standoffs that are really, really short. So my, my flight controller was really close to my PDB and all these wires in here were very, very, very tight. Um, somewhere in that stack, I had something that was touching something else and I had a short um, and I saw a puff of smoke when I first plugged it in. And that's what you don't wanna see when you build something. Um, so I took everything back apart and I put taller standoffs on here. If you have some extra standoffs, go ahead and order yourself some. It might make your life a little easier. Um, also, some guys will take a piece of plastic and put a piece of plastic in here between the flight controller and the PDB to just make sure there's no, 
nothing touching top and bottom here. Um, you definitely don't want any metal to metal contact. Um, the standoffs, the metal standoffs that came with it in the kit, um, those are much shorter than what you see here. I actually used a little taller standoffs to give myself a little more room. I'm gonna see if I can find one of the standoffs in this box to show you. So this is the, the original standoff. Um, and I do like that compact look, but it's much shorter. Um, it's kind of hard to see because it's black, but it's much, much shorter than the original um, or the, the, uh, the ones that I put on there. So I gave myself another quarter inch up and I extended these up quite a bit. And now I have a lot more room in there and I don't have any problems. Um, still just as durable. I don't have any problems with anything cracking or breaking. I did crash really hard when I hit that tree. Uh, at, at one point when you guys saw it tumble in the grass, um, my I had a run cam on there and the run cam flew off. Um, and I did actually break the, the original VTX, the 600 milliwatt that comes with it. So now I have a 200 on here that I had laid around. And uh, I, I covered that in shrink wrap just to and give it a little more durability. And I put some hot glue on the end here because this is going to go in pretty hard in this direction when it goes down. Um, it's like it gets hit with a hammer. So any little bit of extra durability you can add in there is always good. Hot glue does help um, antennas survive some of our hard crashes. But yeah, this VTX separated right here in that crash that you saw coming off the tree. You know, these things, they just, they just don't hold up if you don't have them secured and, and hidden well inside the frame. There's not a lot of room in here. So that's one of the challenges that you have when you're building X frames is that you've got the biggest challenge is you're gonna move stuff around a few times on your setup and this might not be the perfect place for it. Um, this one was riding on the outside at, when it broke so that's definitely not a good place for it. I had it kind of hanging out the back and I was hoping that would be okay, but definitely not. So don't put this on the outside if you can help it, but you still might not void a break if it is hanging out the back. Um, I'm just hoping that this one survives a little more than, than my last one. So the camera in there, the camera runs, um, the stock camera that comes with it, it runs on five volt. So don't plug this into 12 volt, you'll fry it. I did that and uh, this camera is no good anymore. So I had to take a run cam and, and put an extra run cam on there uh, and, and hook that, make sure that's running on the five volt setting. If you, if you, have, if you think that you might burn up a camera, um, put it on five first and you know, if that doesn't power it, put it on 12 next. I, I would suggest not starting out on 12 volt on your camera power supply. Normally most cameras were uh, 12 volt but you really have to pay attention. The problem was there was no documentation on this camera so I know you guys are gonna say look at the look at the specs but there was no documentation on this camera and it doesn't say on the back so um, if any of you guys know a way to look at this camera and tell if it's 5 volt let me know. Um, other than that my ESCs I have electrical tape around them and I just stuck the sticker on there so you guys could see uh, what they were. It comes with nice little standoff uh, foam padded feet for landing uh, which you're you're not going to use those for landing because your battery is going to be on the bottom and you have a nice little grippy pad that comes in there with this kit. Go ahead and put that on the bottom that'll keep your battery from sliding around and the arms are easily replaceable if you did break an arm because all these bolts and everything are exposed and you can go ahead and take your bolts off and put a new arm on it no biggie there there is no motor shrouds that come with this kit so the motors are exposed in your crashes and so far i haven't had any problems now what i did for my receiver is i took the pins off of uh, the d4r2 and i put it in between the flight controller and the top deck here. And then I had my antennas running up on the inside and out the back here. Now this is the setup that I did just yesterday. Hopefully this survives uh, my next hard crash. And you know I've been looking at a lot of X-frames this year and from what I've seen on a lot of them 
I don't like the top housing on a lot of them because a lot of stuff is sitting around and it's exposed. And if you're gonna have stuff high up on the frame, you don't want stuff exposed. So they did a nice job of, of kind of casing this in and making a cage out of the carbon around um, your camera and your components. It does have an easily tiltable camera here. You, you see this little slide. So you can loosen this up and get more tilt. Um, when I do tilt my run cam forward, it's kind of hitting the bottom plate right here, so I can't really go uh, full tilt, but I have enough tilt here to to fly decent um, freestyle out in the field. But I feel like overall, this is probably one of the, the, the best quality kits that I've had. I do like this uh, GEP RC kit, it's called. On the box it says GEP. And there are several different versions available. I think there's a four inch version available. I like the five because it has, I feel like it floats a little better in air mode uh, for some freestyle stuff. And I don't tend to race a whole lot, but um, I do love to get out in the field and fly some, some freestyle. This is definitely a, you could do either or with this one. Um, and I'm definitely gonna try this out on 5S. I haven't tried any of my quads yet on 5S this year. And I think that's where, uh, folks are going um, you're gonna have to have a big field for 5s so like I said though this is a great quad uh, if I had to give it a star rating I'd probably give it a 4.5 mainly because of um, the few revisions of this stack that I had to deal with um, these posts that come with it I think are a little too short um, maybe it was just me maybe it's my the way I had my build done you might be a little neater with your wiring but I tried to be as neat as I could be with my setup, um, kind of anal about my wires. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how thick this frame is. The arms are right at four mil. So, so that's gonna be super durable. This bottom plate is right about 1.5. One point five, I believe, um, yeah. So this top plate is also close to, looks like 1.7, 1 1.8. 1 um, those are probably both close to, almost close to two mil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and round that up to two mil, uh, maybe 1.8. Both are giving me similar readings. This top part, sidewall again it's the same one right about 1.8 this top plate for your Mobius cam or your GoPro looks to be a little thinner I don't know if I can get the gauge in there I think I can that looks about like about 1.5 mil on that top plate but that's not super important it's gonna be the arms that are gonna take a lot of the hits and this top plate here so you've got plenty of frame thickness on the carbon so I wouldn't worry about durability factor is super high on this frame okay so I'll go ahead and I'll give you my final opinion on this thing um, I it, would I buy it that's the biggest question would I buy this one you know for under $200 yeah I, I would buy actually buy this one um, mainly because it comes with like top shelf components 30 amp ESCs are insane that's like an airplane ESC um, you have plenty of room to grow on this one if you want to try out 5s um, you can do that if you want to you want it to be a monster you can put it on 6s I probably wouldn't do that at this point but um, on 4s it is super super powerful so uh, plenty of punch out like I said and and I would buy this one it is a really nice nicely made copter and I, I like how the stack is, is built um, so if you get some larger standoffs if you have some laying around probably go with some larger standoffs make your life a little easier and you'll have less to deal with as far as trying to organize your wires inside that stack but um, you know happy building guys this is a super fun one to build I had a lot of fun building it I think you guys will too um, and more more than the build flying this one is absolutely awesome so 
Thanks again for watching. This has been the GearBest.com, the GP190. Check that out in the link below. Uh, we'll see you in the field, guys. See you on the next one.